Hey everyone, Joey here. And today we'll be looking at emulation on the new ROG Xbox Ally and Xbox Ally X. This is going to be both a guide and a showcase. We'll do the setup first, and then I'm going to do the showcase after. Now the guide works for both the ROG Xbox Ally and the ROG Xbox Ally X, as well as the previous allies too. But the showcase is going to be all about the ROG Xbox Ally. The X has no issues running any of the games or emulators shown today. The base model though, I can't make that same statement. Let's go ahead and do the setup. We're going to be using a program called EmuDeck today. It is the easiest way since it sets up all of the emulators for you, gives you a nice front end for you to launch them from, and it is very new person friendly, which is nice. Now to make sure everything works for you, you're going to want to make sure that Steam is installed ahead of time for this to work. And I would suggest that you use an SD card to store all of your games on. The internal storage can be a little bit limiting, but if you do have a large internal storage, you can use that. It doesn't matter, but SD card is usually easier to use. You should also probably have some ROMs and BIOS files already. ROMs are games, BIOS files are system files for the emulators to work. I have two videos in the description. If you are new and you have no idea what either of these are, you will need them. So you might want to check out those videos first and then come back. First things first, hold the Xbox guide button and head to the bottom for Windows desktop. If it helps, you can use the controls for desktop mode. So push the Xbox guide button now and change from gamepad to desktop under control mode. Now you can use the stick for a cursor and right shoulder and trigger for left and right click. Head over to your browser and to the EmuDeck website, which is just emudeck.com, and click download. If you can't get the keyboard to pop up, you can use the M2 back button plus D-pad up hotkey, and that'll get you the keyboard to pop up. Go ahead and choose the Windows option and then download for free. Head over to your downloads folder in File Explorer, right click, and you wanna run that file as admin. Respond to the pop-ups as they show up, so click yes to slow DNS detected, then just wait a while. I usually click no to letting the app use location, and you're going to have to wait a while again. Go ahead and choose custom mode. Don't worry, I'll be making it easy mode for you through this video. You now need to select the directory where you're going to be storing your ROMs or your games. So again, I have an SD card connected, so I'm going to choose that, which is my D drive but this part is gonna be up to you and where you wanna store things. Go ahead and choose the nice ROG Ally next and then click next. Now go ahead and keep it on low for emulation station and choose next. Feel free to choose a theme that you like for the front end. Personally, I like Artbook next, but you can choose whatever you want. Click next once you have. You can leave all the emulators as default here, unless you know there is something you really don't want, then click next. Now it's asking if you want to auto save when exiting a game and it shows the systems that it'll work for. I usually have this off, so it's your call. If you have a retro achievements login, you can log in here. If you don't, you should look into retro achievements. They're pretty awesome. Do you want bezels on the side of your display? Basically to hide the black bars. I keep this off personally, but you can adjust this later on if you do want it later. So don't worry, you're not locked into any changes or settings that we choose today. Personally, I keep the default choices for aspect ratios for all the games. I would suggest that you do the same. Next up, do you want shaders to be applied? Are you a shaders person? If you are, click yes. If not, choose no. I don't, so I'm gonna turn them off. Finally, we have a list of what is actually gonna be installed. So just click finish. Time to wait a long while. Make sure you're around to click yes to any pop-ups that show up and when they show up, there is one pop-up, then there's a second pop-up, then there's another pop-up where you have to click continue, and then four years later, we can finally click continue, and then just click next on this screen. Now we can finally move all of our games and BIOS files over. So click manual copy, and it is going to tell you that you need to put your games in the ROMs folder and in the right system folder. I would suggest that you read this, just give it a once over so you understand it, I'm going to be showing you anyways, but it is important that you understand it. Head over to your file explorer and then to whatever drive that you installed EmuDeck to, and you should see an emulation folder. 
Inside of that, there are two folders that we care about right now. There is BIOS and ROMs. So if you head into the ROMs folder, you're gonna see all of the system folders, basically all of the consoles. So GB is Game Boy Games, GBA is Game Boy Advance, GC is GameCube, and so on. Now inside of those system folders is where you would put the corresponding games. So at this point, you wanna start putting all of your games in the right folders. Here is an example of my Game Boy folder with all of my Game Boy games inside. Once you've done all of your games, Head back and now go into the BIOS folder. There is a README here and it basically tells you that we need to put all of our BIOS files into this folder. Any BIOS files for RetroArch, DuckStation, PCSX2, and so on. Reminder again, I do have two videos on ROMs and BIOS files. If you're confused, that will point you in the right direction for this. So what I'm gonna do is just paste all of my BIOS files into this folder. Now for Switch, there is a Ryujinx folder here there's a keys folder, and you can paste your keys into here. This actually didn't end up working for Switch, but I'll show you the fix later. Otherwise, just dump all of your BIOS files into the BIOS folder. PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox, Dreamcast, Saturn, and so on. When you are finally done, head back to the MU Deck tab and click Next. Go ahead and click Next here too. Now click Finish, and you should be in MU Deck. If we head over to the quick settings on the left, you can change any of the settings that we did during setup. So remember, you're not locked in here. You can change them. Manage emulators is where you go if there's any updates to do for the emulators. Screen resolution is useful if you want to change the resolution for any system. But let's go over into BIOS Checker. This is a great way to check that you added the right BIOS files. So for me, all of them are green except Switch. If yours isn't, it means that you didn't add the right BIOS files into the BIOS folder. You can't skip this, you have to do it if you want to play these games. But let's go ahead and fix Switch. Click the search icon on the taskbar and type in Ryujinx and open it. You should get a pop-up saying keys not found. Click OK. Head over to actions, install keys, install keys, and then locate your prod keys file and select it. No, I cannot help you with this file. Then back to actions, install firmware and install your switch firmware. Once again, I just, I can't help you with these files. When both are done, exit Ryujinx and check the BIOS checker again. All green, so we are good to go. Push and hold the Xbox guide button, choose Xbox full screen experience, bottom right, and click restart. Go ahead and change your control mode back to gamepad because we don't need desktop mode anymore and it will screw up your gamepad if you don't change it back. Push the Xbox button, head to the home tab and open Steam. I am in Steam big picture mode. It might help you to follow along by jumping into big picture mode too if you want to. Head over to your library tab and then go to non-Steam and then open up emulation station. Close the keyboard that shows up, it is a bug. Go ahead and click quit and then play again. All right, so now we are in Emulation Station and this is where we're gonna launch all of our games from. This is how you play the games. But our theme isn't applied. Push Start, UI Settings, Theme, and go ahead and change it to the theme that you chose earlier in the setup. Back out and you should now see it. If you head into any system, you're gonna see all of your games, but we are missing some artwork and some previews. Go ahead and push Start on the main menu, Scraper, and I would suggest doing this one system at a time because this does take a while. Go ahead and choose one system under Scrape These Systems. There is a limit to how much you can scrape for free, so you may need a Screen Scraper account to do more if you want to do it all in one shot. This is where you would enter your credentials. Content Settings has things you can adjust, same with Mix Image and other, but I like to leave everything as default. Go ahead and click Start. Once all of that's done, this is what it looks like when it is finished. You have box art, you have ratings, you have a preview video and everything. Feel free to scrape all of the systems whenever you get time. It does take a while, so I suggest maybe doing one system a day. Last thing, press start, head to other settings, alternative emulators, scroll down and make sure that you select Ryujinx for switch. Go ahead and push start again and quit to exit out. Now head over to the controller icon on the right and make sure you enable Steam input.
Head back and we're finally done. You can just launch your games using Emulation Station. Now I'm going to do a showcase and there are some systems where you do need to change a few other things. So make sure you pay attention. But going in some sort of order of easiest to run to hardest to run here, and we have the retro systems. The usual stuff like Game Boy, which obviously runs super well. And it is fun to look at on a 16x9 display. Then you have the exact same story with Game Boy Color, which is just a Game Boy with color. Yeah, back in my day, we paid for an entirely new handheld just for color. Crazy, I know. Game Boy Advance uses up a lot of the screen. 3x2 aspect ratio content fits nicely on a 16x9 screen. And obviously you have no issues playing Game Boy Advance. It is super fun to play Game Boy Advance this way. Going backwards to NES, our first of the 4x3 systems, and you do have to deal with black bars and such when playing a 4x3 system, but NES games look great here. Play is just fine, of course. If you enable the bezel, you'll have that, but I like the black screen instead. Same story with Super Nintendo, one of my favorite personal consoles, back when Nintendo still named things Super. Super Switch, may you rest in peace. But Super Nintendo games, all good here. Nintendo 64 is up next, and this one should be interesting for a lot of people. PC handhelds actually have the best compatibility for Nintendo 64 games, especially if you want to use retro achievements, to earn some achievements while you're playing some games. Yeah, that is a thing. Look it up. Retro achievements. It is the best thing ever. Nintendo 3DS games do have shader stutter when they compile, so you're going to notice some of that when you enter an area for the first time, when you do a move for the first time, all of that. Now if you come back later on, it'll be smooth as butter. So just you have to put up with it for a little bit until it gets all of the shaders compiled. But otherwise, upscale 3DS to your heart's content, play whatever you want, or just buy an AYN Thor and play it even better. Just kidding. The Xbox Thor is a future handheld with dual screens. We'll wait for that. Then we get to the Nintendo GameCube, upscaled to 1080p, and yeah, the entire GameCube catalog is completely playable here. And you can get some of those sexy retro achievements that we talked about before because the GameCube emulator on PC does have them. You're going to have a great time here with GameCube. Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Super Mario Sunshine, which is anything but sunny, but there is lots to enjoy. Then we get to the Playstations, starting with Playstation 1, and the world is your oyster when it comes to Playstation 1 games. One of the best systems for list of games ever. There is enough here to keep you busy for your entire lifetime. Playstation 1 was awesome. Let's do Playstation Portable next, and PSP can run on your microwave, it is very easy to run. Upscale this to whatever you want. 8K, do 8K. I I'm, I'm kidding, I I'm not. PSP has an underrated list of games. You can have a lot of fun playing PSP games. PlayStation 2 is up next, and PS2 is where things get a little bit rocky. There is still a large number of games that just do not emulate well, or they have problems emulating. Looking at you, Dirge of Cerberus, some of these games can be fixed, but involves a lot of setting tweaks, a lot of googling, all of that fun stuff. Outside of those games, PS2 runs very well here. Turn on widescreen hacks in the settings if you want and you can enjoy widescreen PS2 games, which is always fun to see. For PlayStation 3, head over to desktop mode first and you want to search for and open RPCS3. Go ahead and uncheck show at startup, select I have read the quick start guide and click continue. You want to head to the link in the description of the video, scroll down to update using a computer, and click download update. You might need to right click this and choose open in a new tab if it doesn't start the download. Head back to RPCS3, file at the top, install firmware, and then select the file that we just downloaded. Let it install and finish, and then you can exit RPCS3 now head back to the Xbox full screen mode, emulation station, and launch a game. PlayStation 3 is where things get a little bit tricky though. Not all games are going to run at full speed. This is sort of where the handheld starts to really struggle, and it'll be really hit and miss for compatibility here. Asura's Wrath had quite a few dips and things like that. A lot of it is shaders compiling, but a lot of it is just the power of the handheld, and it's just not up there. 
Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4, just the testing area had some dips and things like that as well. So I do imagine that when you get into missions, it's going to be a little bit harder to emulate. Back to Nintendo with the Wii U, and there is no games on the Wii U, so don't worry about the Wii U. But if you wanted to play the Wii U, you can. You can be one of the five people who have played a Wii U. Handling this second screen can be tricky for some games, but the Wii U has no games, so don't worry. This was a joke. For Xbox emulation, I haven't found a way to get this to load full screen each time, so I usually tap the view tab and then I click full screen. Xbox emulation is hit and miss. Something like Halo and Jet Set Radio Future were playing all right, pretty much full speed the entire time. But then Blink's Time Sweeper ran like a slideshow. This is gonna vary a lot depending on the game. For Xbox 360, load up any game, double tap on the screen to get the menu bar, click profile, and then show profile menu. Go ahead and click create profile and give yourself a name. It doesn't matter what name. You can use the M2 back button plus D-pad up hotkey to get the keyboard to show up. Go ahead and click create once you've done it. Then select your profile and click the X to close the profile menu. Click OK to restart. Xbox 360 is very similar to Xbox. Internal Sonata seemed to run just fine, but it is not a super demanding game, so it kind of makes sense. Lost Odyssey also ran just fine. It did have some dips though, and I could see it maybe having some hiccups later on in the game, but you would likely be able to play this just fine. Forza Horizon though is just completely unplayable. Like Xbox, Xbox 360 is gonna be hit and miss. For Nintendo Switch, launch a game using Emulation Station, head over to Options, Settings, Input, change Input Device to X Input Controller 1, then turn off Docked Mode at the bottom. We don't really have the power for it. Then click Apply and then click OK. Back to Options, choose Start Games in Full Screen Mode, Exit and come back and play. For Switch Emulation, we're using Ryubing here and that's essentially what EmuDeck installs. There is probably better performance to be had if you want to use Eden instead, or maybe Citron, but this guide is all about making emulation easy, and since this is what EmuDeck installs, this is what we're going with. Switch is kind of a tough one. Mario Wonder has some trouble running at full speed, whereas Mario Kart ran at pretty much full speed the entire time. To use the same quote that I've been using, it is gonna be hit and miss. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy your emulation journey. Get out there, play some games. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about handhelds. Support me through YouTube membership if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.